Hello guys, uh, in this video I would like to explain uh, about testing for structural breaks in the data. Uh, Sometimes we have data which have structural breaks like you can see in this photo. Uh, there is some data which until here and this is you know different data and then there is sudden break which is upward uh, increase and then there's another segment of the data. So such type of changes, we need to test such type of changes and there are tests available in the literature. Uh, so we need to test these changes. If they are significant, then we can use different models. I mean, uh, a regression model to this data set and regression model to this data sets. Uh, in this lecture, I would like to explain uh, Chow test for structural break. Uh, I will explain the theoretical parts and then some results. Uh, which is already available in the literature and then I will have two example in our uh, one with the GGP data of Hungary and then uh, we will generate two data sets with the structural break and then we will test for the structural break and then we will try to use the appropriate regression model because you can use different regression model and this type of problem can be handled by using piecewise regression which I will explain in the next lecture. So let's move uh, to the, the theoretical part of the Chow test. You can see that uh, if suppose you have data like this, then this is fine. You can do, you can model this with the one a single regression model. But if suppose you have data like this, there is a break at this point, then this, there may be different intercept. Uh, uh, maybe this data has a different intercept than this. and Maybe this data have different slope than this, and maybe both intercept and slope may be different for this part as compared to this part. And therefore, we need to, to handle this in a different way as compared to this data. So for this purpose, uh, the most important thing is to test whether this there is structural break or not. And for this purpose, we are using Chow test for structural break. So the important thing before going to model this data to fit a regression model to this data, you need to test whether there is a structural break or not. So we will discuss about the testing procedure for this uh, detailed procedure, uh, the theory theoretical uh, uh, procedure that how we can handle this type of issues. Okay, this is something about Shaw test and how do we find out the structural change has an has in fact occurred. This is the main question, whether there is a structural break or not. To answer this question, we consider the GDP of Ethiopia measure and a, co and a constant um, 20, uh, 2010 US dollar for the period 1981 to 2015. Uh, like many other countries in the world, Ethiopia has adopted the policy of regulated globalization during the early 90s of the last century. So our aim is to uh, whether the GDP of the Ethiopia has undergone any structural change following the majority policy shift due to adaptation of globalization policy. OK, this this type of structural break can be ha can happen because of such type of policies, regime switching or maybe major war or uh, some type of disaster like droughts, flood and something like that. Okay, let's divide the whole study in, uh, period into two sub period okay because the globalization was well, this was uh, done uh, at uh, at the 1991 something like that so the data is divided into two parts pre-globalization 1981 to 1991 and post-closure globalization 1992 to 2015. okay now we can see that Pre-globalization period is this one, and the model can be look like this. We can just we can we can say uh, natural log of the GDP is the dependent variable, and then this is the intercept is the beta zero one in this case, and beta one one, uh, and this is the time variable. So beta one one is the coefficient of time, and this is mu one is the residuals of this duration. Post-globalization period as the same thing log GDP, natural log of GDP, and now beta 0 2 is the intercept, beta 1 2 is this slope of time, and mu 2 is the error term, you can say residuals of this model. 
for the whole whole period you can write like this uh, natural log of gdp beta naught is simple uh, the uh, intercept for the whole duration and beta one is the in the slope of time and mu is the residuals so this is something that we have used these three models one each for different parts of the data and the other one is for the whole data now how the chart test work the regression for the whole period is assumed that there is no structure difference between the two time periods and therefore estimate the gdp growth rate for the entire time period uh, in other words this regression is assumed that intercept as well as slope coefficient remain same over the entire period so you should understand this what is mean by that that there is no change in the they mean that the slope and the intercept remain the same for the whole duration this also that there is no difference between the two time periods uh, that is there are no structure change if this is in fact the situation then if this is the, the if this is the case there is no structural change then of course beta 0 1 is equal to beta 0 2 is equal to beta naught. this means that of course this parameter is same for uh, this uh, both time period and similarly the slope coefficient is also same for all these three models which is equal to beta 1 the first two regression line assume that the regression parameter are different in two sub period sub periods that is there is structural instability either because of the change in the slope parameter or in the intercept parameter there is some problem the second the, the two equations so that there is some changes this may be because of the intercept or maybe because of the slope parameter oh, we can solve this problem by using chart test uh, for structural break so now this is this you should know what we what are there in the chart test which are the assumptions and what are the hypothesis i mean null and alternative hypothesis is extremely important this will help you in interpretation to apply chart test to visualize the structural change empirically the following assumption are required the error term of the first two sub periods regression are normally distributed with same variances okay this is one of the assumption that the error term is distributed normally distributed with the same variance the, the two error terms are independently distributed there is no uh, dependency between the two uh, error terms i mean that the ter error terms of the first series and the second series when we divide it into two parts the break point at which the structural stability be examined should be known a priori you should you can guess where as the break point and you can understand where is the break point so because i will show you in or that how you can know this so this is i think not that difficult now the chart test examine the following set of hypotheses remember these two hypotheses uh, of course one if you remember the null hypothesis then autom uh, automatically you remember the other hypothesis there is no structure change this is another hypothesis there is no structure change against there is a structural change so if we reject the null hypothesis i mean that if the p value is greater than 0 0.05 with the significance level 0 0.05 then we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is structural change so the significance of this just mean that there is a structural change you should remember this hypothesis okay now what we can how we can do this test estimate the third regression assuming that there is no parameter stability and obtain the residual sum of square third regression mean remember these are the three regression line this is for the first segment of the data this is for the second segment of the data and this is for the whole data so we are talking now about this model estimate this model for the whole duration uh, and obtain the residual sum of squares s s uh, r s s a subscript r with degree of freedom n1 plus n2 minus k this is not 2 minus 2k this is minus k where k is the number of parameters estimated n1 the number of observation in the first period n2 the number of observation in the second period so uh, and present case k equal to 2 because there are two parameters you can see that there are two parameters only beta naught and beta 1 so k equal to 2 and there are two parameters okay we call this restricted residual sum of square as 
yet assume the restriction of structure stability. So when you are calculating the residuals for the whole duration, this we call restricted sum of square because it imposes the restriction of restriction of structure stability. That is beta 0 1 equal to beta 0 2 equal to beta 0 and beta 1 1 equal to beta 1 2 equal to beta 1. Okay, now step two. Estimate the first and second regression is uh, assuming that there is a parameter instability and obtain the respective residual sum of square. Okay, estimate the two equations which are for different parts of the data and calculate the residual sum of square for the first one and the second one. And the degree of freedom should be, of course, n1 because n1 is the number of observation in the first data set and k is the number of parameters there. And similarly, this is the degree of freedom for the second data, n2 is the number of observation in the second data, and k is the number of parameters. Uh, step three, as the two set of sample supposed to be independent, we can add rss underscore one, I mean the residual sum of square this one for the first part, and the residual sum of square for the second part. And the resultant, res the resultant residual sum of square may be called the unrestricted residual sum of square because the first one is restricted, which is calculated for the whole model. Therefore, this we call unrestricted when we sum the residual sum of square for these two durations. Okay, sum of square, that is okay. Residual sum of square unrestricted, you R as far unrestricted is equal to the sum of these two. And now with the degree of freedom, remember, you can add these two degree of freedom. This means that N1 plus N2 minus 2K. So this is now, N1 plus N2 minus 2k degree of freedom for this unrestricted residual sum of square. Okay, now the test statistic to be used is given. Now the chart test is this is equal to F, this follow F distribution. So that is this is denoted by F. You can denote by other things, but uh, remember that this follow F distribution because uh, this is you know uh, residual sum of square and divided by residual sum of square. So F is equal to this one, residual sum of square restricted. Minus the reduced sum of square of unrestricted divided by k is the degree of freedom for this. If you subtract, there is degree of freedom of this. This is n1 plus n2 minus k, and the residual sum of the degree of freedom for this is n1 plus n2 minus 2k. So you can calculate and you can get k. n1 plus n2 minus k, and then there's a minus sign and then there's n1 plus n2 minus 2k so you can get k and this degree of freedom is of course n1 plus n2 minus 2k which is here under the assumption of the true null hypothesis this follow f distribution so this is followed this follow f distribution so you can calculate if you want to compare the values the value of that is statistic with the uh, tabulated values you can use f distribution okay now f this F test is significant. We reject in the hypothesis and no structures stability and conclude uh, of no structure stability. We reject in the hypothesis of no structure stability. I conclude the fluctuation in the GDP is high enough to believe that it's a lead to the structure and stability in the GDP growth path. If the chart is suggests a structure back, then how to deal this issue? Okay, when we reject the hypothesis, we can interpret that there is a structure instability. And if there is a structure instability, the chart test was until here. Okay, so this means that there is structure instability, but now how to model? If the chart test suggests the structure breaks, then how to deal the issue? This is now the other problem. Okay, there are four possibilities uh, to model the data now. However, we cannot tell whether the difference in the two regression is because of differences in the intercept terms or slope coefficients or both. Very often, this knowledge itself is very useful. By analyzing such a situation, we have the following four possibilities. Coincident regression, where both the intercept and the slope coefficient are the same in the two sub-period regression. Okay, this is the same thing which uh, you can use without chart just because uh, you can use model three. There is no structure stability and stability. And you can say that uh, the parameter both are coefficient and uh, the, I mean that the intercept and the slope coefficient are the same for a two sub period regression. Now, parallel regression where only the intercept and the two regression are different, but the slope are same. 
So this is one option that there is the problem, the, the changes because of the intercept and not because of the slope. Slope is the same. Uh, concurrent regression where the intercept and the two regression are the same, but the slope are different. This is now the second one that there is no change because of the change is not because of the intercept and the change is because of the slope. This similar regression where both the intercepts and the slope and the two regression are different. Now we can say that fourth one is says that the difference is because of both slope and intercept. Okay, now okay, now we can see that the parallel regression where only intercept in the two regression are different, but the slopes are the same. Okay, now this is some some type of regression. Suppose the economic reforms do not influence the slope parameter, but instead simply affect the intercept term. Then following the economic reform in 1992, we have the following regression models in two sub periods, uh, pre-globalization and post-globalization. So pre-globalization model is beta 0, 1 plus beta 1, 1, t plus mu 1. And post-globalization, it is beta 0, 2 plus beta 1, 1, t plus mu t. So the coefficient, the slope coefficient and the intercept the intercept coefficient beta 0 t and the slope coefficient beta 1 2 and for the whole period this model will look like this as we explained this already now the test is if there is no structure change then this is equal to beta naught we have done and this is equal to beta 1 so this means that you can use this model simply and therefore we are not using this in the four option in these four because this is the same simple model which uh, is assume that there is no structure instability because of intercept and slope okay now if there is structure change in uh, and, and that affect only the intercept term not the slope term this means that beta 0 1 that is not equal to this one and beta 1 1 is equal to beta 1 2 to capture this effect, the dummy variable D is included in the following manner. Okay, now this we include. This is uh, the dummy variable is included for. Uh, and this is the coefficient. This is the dummy variable, and the dummy variable can be interpreted here that D equal to one for the post reform period sub period two. For the second period, the value of D is equal to one, and for the uh, this is zero for the pre-reform period. This should not be the post-reform period, remember. One, where D equal to one for post-reform period, and D equal to zero pass for pre-reform period. Remember, this is mistaken dimension wrong. Okay, now this is the, 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 the original model, and this is now we are testing whether there is structure change. The structure change is significant or not. Now remember, uh, in this model, F, D equal to zero, there, there is no, I mean, there is no structure. Uh, beta not equal is not significant. I mean, that suppose D equal to zero, we can say simply the difference in the logarithm of GDP between the two sub period is given by the coefficient beta two. So this is the difference in the GDP. Uh, and of course, uh, yes, if D equal to one, if D equal to one, then the model will be a bit different. Then for the post reform period, this estimated model will be look like this. And you can see, I would like to I would like to explain this by writing. So you can see that let's suppose this model is given by this one. Okay, uh, this now. GDP uh, estimated model is equal to beta naught beta 1t plus d. Uh, okay, this is beta 2 d. This is the estimated model. You can say now if d equal to 1, then this model. I think better to write like this on the whole. This is equal to now beta naught here 
d equal to one, so this is beta two, right? Plus beta one t. This model will look like this for d equal to one. And natural log GDP. This is equal to FD equal to zero. There is uh, no structure break, then this will remain beta naught. This will look like this. You can see the change is because of the intercept, intercept in this model for D equal to one after the reforms, after the globalization or whatever, after the regime switch as beta naught plus beta two. And in this case, this is beta naught. So you can interpret the result like this. Okay, and they also explain like this, but I just mentioned these two together. So this is now, uh, you can interpret these results. Uh, this is the Ethiopian GDP, and you can see that this is the results uh, of the software uh, R. And you can see that the GDP is run. I will do this in R, so you will see how we can do this. Uh, this is the GDP is run on time plus D. D mean this is the dummy variable for the post globalization and of course d is equal to one after globalization and d equal to zero before globalization okay so you can see the result now this is 2022 this is the intercept 22.50 significant this is the, the coefficient beta you can say uh, beta coefficient or beta one coefficient uh, of time significant and this is the this is the D, which is zero before the post globalization, which is zero for the pre globalization and one for post globalization. So, this is significant. Now, you can see if you understand theoretically this thing, you need to add the value, the coefficient of D with this one. So, that will give you the coefficient for post globalization and intercept. Remember. So this is now the output and you can see all are significant. Now you can reduce the model. You can conclude the model according to this. This is the model. You can write this is the model. Uh, this is the intercept. This is uh, the slope coefficient of time and this is the slope coefficient of the demi variable. So you can see like this as this has negative sign with the minus is minus 0.49. So you can see like here. Now, you can write this model fd equal to zero, then this is the model for free. This one for free reform period. The same model, just this will become zero because d equal to zero. So this will vanish and this will be the model. And for post reform period, d equal to one. So you need to subtract this from this intercept. So the intercept is look like 22.013 subtracted this one and plus this will remain the same. So this is the model now for post reform period. OK, the third case is uh, uh, now we will discuss about that the change. Or the structure instability is because of the slope parameter, not because of the intercept parameter. And you can make hypothesis like this. This is the same and we are need. We need to test this one. To capture the effect of such changes in the slope parameter, it is necessary to add the product of the time variable and the dummy variable. Remember this point. We need to add. We need to add product of the time variable and the dummy variable t d. The new variable t d is called the interaction variable or slope dummy variable since it allows for a change in the slope of the relationship. OK, now you can you can run this model in R or whatever in software beta naught plus beta one D plus beta two DT or TD. So this is now beta two T is the coefficient which will tell you whether the change is because of the slope coefficient or not. So you can estimate this model and remember again that if D equal to one, then this model will now these two will end. You can do like this. This is true because t is common, so beta one hit plus beta two hit. Now this is the change is because of the slope coefficient in this case, not of the intercept. Intercept is the same. 
And if this is equal to zero, then of course, this is the simple model, beta naught plus beta one hat t. This, this scene, this in or uh, you can see this, the, again, this is the co slope co intercept coefficient, the slope coefficient for t and the coefficient for td. Now remember that if you understand in this model, you can make your models from the data. You can see these, these, this is the interpretation. This is the whole model which you can write. This is the whole model intercept, time coefficient, and TD coefficient. So you can write like this. Now, FD equal to one, D equal to one, the post reform period, and then you need to add this to this one. This is negative, so this will be separated and the reduce the value reduce to this one. So this is the post reform period model, and this is the pre reform period because d equal to zero. So there is no change in this variable in this parameter. And the last one is you need to test whether the change is because of the slope coefficient or the intercept coefficient. In that case, you need to do use this model beta naught beta 1 d, the main model, and then beta 2 d, the dummy variable. But this, this, will, this will assess whether the change is because of the intercept or not. And then beta 3 t d, and this will assess whether the change is because of the slope or not. OK, obviously, when d equal to 1, then the force reform model is equal to this one. And you can add these two parameters like this. Beta naught plus beta 2 here, this one is this intercept coefficient and beta 1 head plus beta 3 head n to t. So this is the end and this slope coefficient now. And for d equal to 0, so this will reduce to 0, this will reduce to 0, and you will get the basic model. And this is now in the OR uh, that you can see that the coefficient, the intercept, the model, this is the time coefficient, the d coefficient, which is d force globalization or force reform, and this is the T and D for the T and D post T D coefficient. So you can reduce, you can construct your model using this concept from this data. Now you can write a model based on this. This is the whole model which have four component T D D and T and this one. And now if D equal to one, you can get this one model because uh, you need to subtract this from this. You will get this coefficient. And in this case, this is addition because there is no and the, the negative the sign is positive in both cases so this will add you will get this is force reform period and this model in this case if d equal to zero you will get this model only because this two term will become zero so this was all about uh, the theoretical part now let's move to r that how we can do this this was because and this, i mean that i explained the other results the other so not my results and i just explained the theory uh, okay, uh, and now uh, I would like to explain uh, the procedure of the chart test uh, in R uh, with the um, <clears throat> our, our own data, I mean with the GDP which we have for Hungary. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's clear this with a control L and now read the file which have this data okay now the data is in y and now i don't want to do these steps let's do this you can make it a data frame if you want and if you don't want it's not necessary uh, but some some commands you need data frame that's an important okay we have this data this necessary command is head and the data and that will give you the head with the upper six values. You can increase or decrease the number of values, depend. Uh, however, uh, you can see the first column is here, second column is the GDP of Hungary, the fourth column is GDP of Pakistan, and then there is D variable. Uh, you can introduce this variable later. Uh, let's plot the GDP of Hungary. This is uh, column two, so you can subset like this. Okay, this look like the plot, and you can see that there is a clear, very, very clear structure change. And however, you can see here is also there is change. The graph, the data start from here very smoothly, but there is 
you can see a change here. This is round about at 13 position. Uh, and now let's change this uh, to lag because we need to stabilize the variance. So this natural lag, uh, the lag is taken up the GDP of Hungary. And this is the T is the GDP at the, the year, the first column of the GDP data, which is here you can see from here. So I'm just taking the log of the second column, which is the GDP of Hungary, and this is now assigned to T. So we have two variables now. One is log of GDP, there it is uh, L GDP, and this is T is GDP, uh, first column, which is uh, years. Now just put a simple model, uh, which means that just running GDP on time. Uh, this, car, this command can be used there. To LM and then GDP is regress on time and the data is given that is GDP and this result is store in model one zero model zero not model one zero model zero just run this and then check the summary of the model so you can see this is the summary of the model uh, you can see the intercept is this which is significant highly significant and this is the slope a coefficient of time, which is also highly significant. It's a simple model. Now I want to check for structural break. I remember that for structural break, you need uh, to install this package. I already installed this package, so I'm just calling this package in our environment. However, if you uh, if you did not install it already, you need to install this package. I just call this package. And now uh, this is the test. Uh, which you can see SC test and this is this the format is you need to run a regression model GDP log of GDP and time and then you need to mention what type of test you want to do for structure change that is type which is equal to chow chow and you, you need to mention these quotes double quotes and point 13 you know this is the this was the assumption in the theoretical part that you should know a priori the point where there is a break this is not difficult you will see i will show in or how you can do this uh, you can see from data but you can see just you can test in or whether there is structure change or not just test this and see the value of the f test you can see you can see that uh, the f the value of the statistic is this one and p will is 0 0.00877 Mean that the value is less than 0 0.05. And if you consider the significance level is 0 0.05, this means that we reject the null hypothesis of structural stability. And we can say that there is structure change. We accept the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis of structure change. So there is structure change at point 13. <clears throat> you can test this test for another point. Maybe let's suppose nine. And you can see the result. We accept the null hypothesis. There is no structural change. So you can test whether there is a change or not at nine or ten points. So at nine point there is no structural change as the p value is greater than 0 0.05. Okay. So now it is confirmed that there is structural change. Now we need to test. You know that there are different possibilities of the regression model when when it is confirmed that. If the chart is suggests a structural break, then how to deal the issue? So this is the issue now, and there are four possibilities. Uh, coincident regression, uh, this means that both intercept and slope coefficient are the same in the two sub period of, uh, regression. So we don't need to do this. We need to do this. This one will show you that the changes because of the intercept. The third will, sh will show you that the changes because of the slope coefficient. And the fourth one will show you that the changes, the I mean that the structure change are the changes are due to this intercept and slope both. Okay. Now you need to introduce D uh, to I mean that you need to uh, uh, create and generate D. That is, this mean that uh, this mean that uh, D is equal to C. Uh, which will make a list of the values and repeat 0 12 time and repeat 1 49 time total is 61 so this will give you 61 values in d just do this 
In the other ways, you can do like this. Just assign values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 49 ones, but that is difficult. You need to write like this. But this is the simplest way. Just do this. You need to work smartly. Okay, this is N or D. So this is the these are the values of D. Now you can see the length. The length should be 61. Okay. Okay, now we have other things. Testing various regression models. This means that we need to test whether the change is because of the intercept slope or both. So this is the first one model is very simple model. We don't need to do anything. Just need to estimate the simple model. We don't need to do this because we already have done this. Uh, I, I, let's do this again. So this is the same thing which we have done. We don't need to do this because uh, this is this mean that the intercepts and slope are the same for both time duration. There is no structural change. So this just leave that. Now this model is if you understand the theoretical part, you can understand this very easily that the log of GDP is regressed on time and then a dummy variable. This dummy variable will show that whether the structure change, I mean that the dummy variable after the changes, the globalization or whatever is significant or not. Let us do this. OK, so this is now the coefficients. This is the intercept. And I mean that beta naught, you can say this is beta one per t time. And this is now you can say D, which is a dummy variable. Uh, and the coefficient is uh, that is beta two. You can you can you can write like this way. I will just explain this model. By writing. Uh, And it's not connect. OK. Now you need to know this. Oh, this is the, the coefficient is minus 1.13. I can write this model now. OK, now you can write this model as log GDP. Estimated value is you can see the coefficient. 1.13 1.13 that is 1.13 multiply by e power i will write power and then okay the e power plus 2 and 6.02 6.02 6.02 multiplied by e power minus 2 and this is e power plus 2 and you need to write this here there is t and now the the coefficient of d is 3.2.39 2.39 multiplied by e power minus 1 to d so this is now the full model. Intercept. Coefficient of T and coefficient of D. Now for D equal to zero, you can say before our free globalization. Globalization. This is now the model as uh, uh, GDP. That is equal to because if D equal to zero, this term will come not uh, included in the model. Then 1.13 e, e power plus 2 plus 6.02. You can directly write like this minus 2. I just want to see. Okay, yeah, the, this is the minus. So we need to write this with the minus. There is a minus sign here and there is a minus sign here. So this is now the model for T equal to one. This means post globalization. 
globalization the model as you can you can because d equal to one so you can add this term with this term minus one point one three This is equal to minus 1.13 e power minus 2 plus 2.39 e power minus 1 plus 6.02 e power minus 2 t. So this is now the intercept in this case. In case, in case of the post globalization, this is the intercept term. And this is the slope, and the slope is the same here, but intercept is different in case of pre globalization. So you can interpret all these models like this. You can write and then you can do some manipulation to make it in the final form. Okay, and let's go back to R. Okay, so now uh, I'm including DT or TD. I mean that you need to multiply for if you want to stick. Whether the changes are due to slope coefficient, you need to multiply in the variable with the time variable. I just need to do this. And now run the model. Again, the GDP is run by time and then DT for slope coefficient. So you can see that this is the coefficient, the intercept, this is the coefficient of time, and this is the coefficient of which is the coefficient of dt now. I would like to explain this model as well. And then I will not explain the final model. One point minus one point four two. Okay, now. Then the model you can build from here is log of GDP minus 1.42 e power my, uh, plus 2 plus. OK. 6.07 e power minus 0 0.2. 6.06. 6.06 e power minus 2 and there is a time variable plus this is 6.07 uh, 1.08 power e power minus 1 1.08 1. minus 1 this is 7.6 okay so this is now with the dt so now this is the full model now for d equal to zero. This means before globalization or pre globalization. I will write like this. Then the model become GDP. This is equal to minus 1.42 e power plus 2. And this you can write like this. But remember that when d equal to zero, this is vanished and you can write this like this. You don't need to do any changes. Minus two and t. This is one model. The pre-globalization, post-globalization GDP, which is equal to you can write this one point four two plus six point zero six e power minus two t plus d equal to 1, then this is equal to 1.08 e power e power minus 1 t because d equal to 1. So you can add these two now to make this a single GDP is equal to minus 1.42 plus 6.07 e power minus 2 plus 1.08 and to t. So now this is the slope coefficient. In case of post globalization, this is the slope coefficient and this is the intercept. So you can interpret the model 
in this way. Uh, let's estimate the loss model in this category. This is the loss model which can include both demi variable for slope and demi variable for demi variable for intercept and demi variable for slope. So you can run this model and see the results. And you can interpret the same way as we did. Okay, now let's generate our own data set. So that was some data which I had taken from the website. So let's generate this data. X is the random data from normal distribution, the 50 observation with 10 mean value and five standard deviation. The second data is assigned to Y, which is again normal data from normal distribution with 50 observation. 50 is the mean value in this case and standard deviation as 10. And let's do this. Okay, and now let's append this. Make a single series. Append command will make a single series and you can see this will look like this. Okay, it's a hundred observation. You can get observation. Remember that there is a there is a sudden jump in the values and 50. You can see and until 50, the values are 36.8, something like that, and then suddenly it's 19 not 19 that is 54 43 and something like that you will see in the plot or you can see there is a sudden change you can see here so just generate the data which you can generate this such type of data and then you can apply the test now again i am preparing d but this is d1 because i have used d already so this is d1 now i'm the same as i created d Okay, length is 100, D1, and these are the values. You can plot D1, so 100, 50 zeros, and 50 ones. Time variable you can generate from 1 to 100, so this will give you 100 values, yeah, of course, from 1 to. Now you need, you need to make a data frame. It's not necessary, however, you can make a data frame of the data, time, and D1. So this is include this include the data which you will use. Now this is the data. The data T and D D1 not D. Now you know you there was a point uh, there was a point where you can see uh, at 51 there was a sudden change. So you can test this at 51 again the same test. You can use for structural break the same procedure you are running data z and time t and test is use job at point 51 you can see the this is highly significant the p value so this means that there is a structure break break and you can see the data again that there is obvious structure break you can see it's very clear Maybe you can test for other values because this data is randomly generated. So maybe the test will also give you result that there is structural break like here or maybe here because you know there are changes. But this is obvious change which we made, you know, artificially we generated this break. Now again, I'm using the same procedure for using different model. This is the simple model which assume that there is no change in the intercept and uh, in the slope or two durations. So I'm not estimating that model. Just estimate this model, and you can get this is intercept coefficient for t and coefficient for d1, which is high, which has high value and highly significant. And that is because we, uh, there's a clear difference between the two. It's a very, very obvious uh, structure break. So this means that the intercept for this data is smaller and for this data is very higher. It's look like uh, because 39 plus 10, it's look like 49, something like that here. So this change is because this is looking like that. It is because of the intercept. But let's see how we can test here for slope as well. Okay, okay. This is also highly significant. 
you can make the model which i uh, which i made already uh, i mean that in the theory you can learn and then i made some models from the results so you can make a model and then you can assume that d one is equal to zero then we will give one model for free structure break from for this data and if you say d equal to one then you will get a model for this one so this is now and we can run the last model for this data which include both intercept and slope then you enable for intercept and slope okay so this here you can see that uh, D1, which is dummy variable for the intercept, which is highly significant, and the dummy variable, which is for the slope coefficient D1T, which is not significant in this case. So, this is all about uh, structure change and testing for structure change that how we can use, how we can do structure change in financial time series, time series, econometrics, uh, etc. Uh, I hope this. Uh, you understand this. If you have any question, please write, write in the comments. And uh, if you have a question, you can write in the comments. Uh, thank you very much and see you in the next video. Ciao.